So you want to go ahead and open Adobe After Effects and this is the first thing that you're going to see. So what you want to do is press Command I to import your file. Then you want to import it as Composition Retain Layer Sizes and that's just going to retain all the layers that we did on Photoshop. And then make sure it's clicked on editable layer styles and click OK. And then you want to just double click on where it says composition next to it. And it's just going to come up in your timeline here down below. And you want to go to the view and just click fit so you can see everything. Now right now my composition is set to 8 seconds which is a good duration. If I need to change it later, I could just go to composition, composition settings, and you could just enter the number of seconds you want as duration, but I'm gonna keep it at eight seconds for now. So my idea for this composition is that I want all these paper shreds to start in the middle, overlapped and stacked like a messy mess, and then sort of spread out to the edges, and then come back into the middle, and then spread out to the where the word is going to for formulate in the end so as if someone is looking through shreds of paper trying to find the, the right one to put together and whatnot so the basic techniques that i'm going to show you today is just playing around with keyframes of positions and rotations we're just going to change their positions and rotate the pieces so they're not perfectly straight all the time so the first thing that I'm going to do is take my playhead here and place it all the way at the 8th second where I want the animation to kind of end at. So I want this to be the final result. And then I'm going to take my layers here, I'm going to start at this one over here and go all the way at the end, press shift and have them all selected. And then I'm going to hit a shortcut on my keyboard for P, P for position. And then just kind of click on the stopwatch at any layer. And that's just going to put keyframes on all my layers here at the 8 second, telling it this is where I want it to end at. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to press R for rotation. And just click on the stopwatch. And this also tells it this is what I want the rotation to end at. And then I'm going to take my playhead all the way to the beginning now, where I'm going to start to mess them up and bring them all to the middle. So while they're all selected, I'm just going to press P again and then click out so I can deselect all the layers. And I'm going to go to my first layer over here, which is this guy over here. There we go. I want it to start in the middle of the poster. So while I'm pressing the layer, I'm just going to drag it out to the middle. And then if I want to change its rotation and not have it at its exact rotation here, I'm just going to press R. And where it has the property for the degrees, I'm just going to change the rotation. Make it a little bit slanted like that. And I'm just going to move on and do the same exact thing for all the layers. So my second layer here is the long blue shred of paper on the very right here. So if I drag it to the middle and then press R and rotate it a little bit and press my stopwatch, I'm just going to make my resolution to a quarter, not full, just so this can easily preview quicker because this is quite a heavy file and we don't need to see it at full resolution right now. So if I press my spacebar right now just to preview what happens when I place those keyframes, this is what it's gonna look like. So that's just kind of the gist of the animation. We're just gonna keep repeating these steps for all of the layers here, just putting them all in the middle first and then having them kind of span out till the very end where it originally looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That's basically it. As you can see, just they kind of all start out messy, I just did them randomly, kept rotating, kept changing positions until it looked like a 
nice random mess, if you will. And then they kind of just overlap each other until they get to the very end here. Now if you'll notice I haven't touched Fix You or Coldplay, I'm going to leave these till the very end. So I just want to turn them off for now by clicking on the eye here at the very left. Now, this is all in well and we can just call it a day from here. But I want to give it a little bit of a kick and a spice and give it a little bit of a nice seamless transition. So I think right about maybe the fifth second here. What I want to do is I want to again select all of my layers, hit P, select out, and right about here I want to actually change their positions again and kind of make them scatter around to the edges a little bit before they come in again to formulate the word. So for example, I'm just going to take this one over here, which is the blue one here. And I just want to push it up a bit, like so. And I am just want to repeat this for the rest of the layers, kind of scatter them about towards the edges, and then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so you see they started out a bit shuffled, and then they kind of scatter a bit to the edges, and then kind of come back again and formulate the word. Okay, so I kind of want to do the same thing again, but I'm going to go to second 615, right before it kind of reaches to the word again. And I want to do the same exact exercise again, but this time instead of scatter them to the edges, I want to bring them a little bit closer to the middle just so we can have an even more seamless transition when it kind of goes back into its original formation again. So I'm just going to again play around with the positions here. Okay, so let's give this a preview. Okay, so you kind of see the hesitation a little bit when it goes out to the edges right here and then kind of collects back in the middle and then goes back out again. So what we can do to fix that is maybe at the third second, I can just drag all my keyframes here and drag them out to the third second. Okay, that's much better. And something else that I'm noticing is that an, there is not enough time at the end to actually look at the word. It just kind of starts back up again. So I want actually the end result here to not end at the last second, but maybe at the sixth second. So there's at least time, two seconds at the end to look at the word. So I'm just going to drag all of my final keyframes here. And just drag them out here to the sixth second and then I can go to the fourth second here and take all of the penultimate keyframes and drag them right here so at least they're just spaced out like that and see what that looks like.
Okay, so I'm thinking I want to just prolong this composition just a couple more seconds because it's not staying as long as I'd like it to be at the end. So I'm just going to make it to 10 seconds. And you're going to find that these blue bars for the layers are cut off at the 8th second. So I'm just going to select all and just drag them out. And that way it can stay beyond the 8 seconds and just kind of pause before it starts back up again. So I'm happy with that. And it's just going to place all my keyframes here. And then the same thing with R, click on the diamond. And then you want to go to the seventh second here, right before it just comes about to the word again. And I just want to play around with these shreds a little bit more. And maybe bring them up a bit. Just a very, very slight movement, nothing too pronounced. I want it to be a very subtle shuffle. So I'm just like moving it one point above, one point under. So that it almost looks like Fix You, but not quite yet. Just until the very last second, it looks like Fix You. Alright. And then let's see what that looks like. Alright, so that looks good. Now a top tip to do for something like this is easy ease. So I'm gonna select all of my keyframes here all the way to the top. And I'm going to go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, and then Easy Ease. And that's just going to literally ease out all of the smooth transitions and it kind of slows it down to certain parts and then speeds it back up again to its normal speeds. And it just makes things look a lot softer and not too much of a rigid movement. Okay, so you see what a world of a difference that just made. Do so you see that pause and that smooth transition? All from Easy Ease, which is perfect. And last but not least is our Coldplay and Fix You names. We had hidden them in the beginning. I'm just going to unhide them now by clicking on the I. And what I'm going to do is that I want to push their positions at the beginning away from the poster. So for Coldplay, I'm just going to drag it down so it's not visible. And for Fix You, I'm going to drag it up. So that's where they're going to be for the majority of the poster animation. And I'm just going to click on the stopwatch. And then I'm going to go to maybe right about here in the middle of the 7th and 8th second and I'm gonna click on the diamonds again just to tell it that this is where I still want it to be at the seven and a half second and then at the ninth second I'm gonna have fix you come down here and then Coldplay come up here so they're just gonna appear just as the poster is finally formulated and they're just gonna swoosh in there. So let's see what that looks like. All right, and that's pretty much it. We are done with this animation. 
That is the idea that I had for it. And I know this may seem like a lot, but it's just because we have a lot of layers going on here. But this is all just placing keyframes of positions and rotations and just changing them around as we go along the time. So the basic techniques here are super easy and easily transferable onto anything you'll do later on. So imagine you have only like five or six layers here and you're just changing their positions, their rotations to have that kind of effect at the end. So I'm just going to collapse all my layers here. You want to click out and just shortcut on your keyboard, press U. And that's just going to collapse all of the layers nice and neat. You don't have to do it individually. And you can do the same thing, just press U again to kind of expand them. And there you go. Alright, so I think we're ready to export this file. So you just want to go to File export at to render queue and then this window is going to come up here you want to go to lossless next to output module and double click on that then go to format options and i believe the default will be animation so you just want to drop down that menu and i like to use output prores 422 or high quality it's just a higher data version quality and then we're going to compress it later so i'm going to go ahead and click that and click OK and OK again. Then you have here the option to save it as whatever name you want to name it and wherever you want to save it as. I'm just going to save it to my desktop and click Save. And that's pretty much it. You want to go to that pretty little button over here and click Render. And now my friend, we wait. And you're gonna be, hear that beautiful sound of rendering. There we go. Love that sound. And you just wanna save this. And I'm just gonna go to my desktop here and you're gonna find the file as an MOV file, which is a typical format for QuickTime. But this is usually a very heavy file format. So what I like to do is head over to Handbrake and this is free to use, free to download off of Google for both Mac and Windows and it basically just compresses any videos to mp4 and there are tons of other options that you can play with but I'm just gonna drag it into the window here and it's just gonna be scanning it and you can save it as whatever name you want to save it as and make sure you put it to the destination that you want to put it as and it's gonna save it as an mp4 which retains the same high quality of the video but just a very smaller file size. And you're gonna go ahead and click start. And that's it, you're done. So we can just preview the file. And yep, yeah, everything is good to go. We're done.